RBGFM, locals talking to locals. Time to say good morning to the Deputy Chair of the Parapara Umu Rheumatic Humidity Board, Guy Burns. Good morning, Guy. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, I can hear you nice and clear now. Yeah, thanks very much. Yes, ben. Ah, no oh, trouble yeah. at all. Now, um, long-term plans, you've got your board submissions in. You're going to be speaking to them, are you? Yeah, yes. Um, we've we've been looking at the long-term plans, and as you know, the rates are going up uh, around about 5% or so. Um, this, 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 a step in the right direction is coming down a little bit, but what, what concerns me more is the Wellington Regional Council's component of our rates. They actually want to put it up virtually 17%, and that's just absolutely ridiculous. I just can't believe that they got, they got the audacity to even think about that, and Penny Gaylor seems to be blowing a trumpet and promoting it as a great thing, and it has to happen. But they've been so unwise with some of their spending. You look at uh, that, that, that visitor centre in QE Park, million-dollar building, and it just sits there empty most of the time, and you go past it, everyone wants to go to the beach. They're not really interested in stopping around there so much. So we're really disappointed that they want to put it up so much, and, we're, and, we're, uh, and I'm making a bit of noise about that. So you're sort of talking to Greater Wellington Regional Council and Penny Gaylor, are you, as a, a personal uh, a, a opposing of the rate increase? Yeah, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm just letting the public know that uh, you need to make a bit of noise and, and to let uh, your feelings be known. But it's a bit late now. Uh, the, the, the time for submission is finished now, so hopefully they'll take note. And I see the mayor is, is also not so happy with it. And, and the KCDC themselves have put a submission in about the, the higher rates increase from regional council. Yes, yeah, fair enough. So they'll be representing us down there. Argentinian ants down at the Paraparimi Beach departure point. That's a bit of a worry, isn't it? It is a worry, and and they have been in the Manly Street area for, for many years, and uh, I'm not I'm surprised that Doc haven't really been monitoring it more closely. So they need to just keep the base station permanently down there near the uh, access point to Capity Island, and hopefully the ants don't get across there. Because once they get across there, you're not going to stop them. They they just voracious things. Even the lizards are a bit frightened of them. Might eat them, which which is strange, isn't it, for a lizard? But you really want to watch out for those things. It's shocking. So you say they've been down in the Adney Street area for some years? Yes, I actually noticed them about two years ago. I was, I was working down there and I was near in Norfolk Pine and I couldn't believe it. The whole tree was was just swarming with trillions of ants going up and down, up and down, and, and they were feeding off the sap of it because those things put out massive amounts of, of sort of sap, uh, which is on the outside of the bark, and, and i just never seen anything like it. There's millions of ants just feeding off this giant Norfolk pine. Mm, so it's going to be very hard to make sure that none of them get across to Cavity Island, doesn't it? Uh, well, it, 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 uh, it shouldn't be too difficult because... The queens don't really move around that much. It's more when you're moving dirt around or plants. That's where you have to be extremely careful. But the odd ant going across shouldn't be a problem because it's the queens you've got to worry about, and, and they don't really move around so much. Right, OK. Reduce speed limit through the Ramadi South Village. Have you got anything in the long-term plan for that, or are you still discussing that? Uh, that's not really a long-term plan. Uh, we, as a board, we've been pushing for that to, to go down, and then it's come from the Ramadi South Residents Association. Trevor Daniels has suggested it about six, seven years ago, and, and we've, we've supported him on that, and the community down there wants that. The majority of people do. So now the time for submissions, and there's two options down there. One is to have a area around the shops there, 30k. The other one is to have a 40k. And and uh, we're promoting, or I'm promoting, that it should be 30k around those shops. It's a nasty corner. Cars are parking at the dairy there and then the shops, and, and they pull out almost on the blind corner. So you really need to get people to reduce their speeds. Mm. And the speed hump down there has helped, uh, has reduced traffic. But overall, we need to have a general drop in speed from around Matai Road down to the sea. Right. Any further development on the Paraparumi Beach Saturday market, where it might be located? Yes, yes. Uh, as a board, we ask council to to facilitate the market to move uh, elsewhere in the beach area, and they're taking that on board. And uh, I know the mayor is actively pursuing that, and, and the council uh, are helping the organisers of the market to find a way around that, and and hopefully they'll be able to move there before the end of the year. Mm. Do you think McLean Street is the ideal spot for it? I personally do. Uh, I think it's going to be perfect there because uh, the, the sh- stall holders can be set up along the beach. People can also use, access the shops adjacent to that area. And 
it'll be the you ideal know, place to have it. You know, I've seen places like that before where, where streets have been closed off. The only thing is we're so overboard now with health and safety that it, it could cost tens of thousands just to get a report yeah. talking about it. And, and and the way things are going, you, you may need to have permanent staff just to monitor the road code on the road or something like that. Yeah, sure. Now, you've got a meeting tomorrow night, haven't you? Yes, I was going to say that, actually. We're meeting for the first time that I can think of in the Otai Hunger Boating Club Tuesday tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So what we're doing, we're trying to get out into more different parts of the community rather than just be set up in the few places we normally meet. We want to try and cover the length and breadth of the area. So our previous meeting was at the Ramadi South Bowling Club, which a lot of people didn't know there was one down there, but sadly it's actually just closed down. Uh, so that was a great venue, and now we're at the Old Thai Hunger Boating Club tomorrow at 7. Right, much on the agenda, Guy? No, it's actually fairly quiet. Uh, there's nothing um, controversial. Uh, I think there was an urgent matter that the council wanted us to bring up about the yellow, some yellow lines on the roads we put on, but I don't think it's very urgent, and I'm not, I, I won't be supporting it as urgent matter at all. Right. I just noticed, uh, and you might not have heard about it, but you're going to be discussing possibly the Otorawa Park. So um, I think the council are going to be talking about that, how to develop Otorawa Park. Well, not on our agenda. No. But that's uh, interesting to hear that. So Somebody you, will bring it up, no doubt. You obviously got to step ahead of me there, Nigel. Oh, that's OK, <laughs> guy. You have a good day, and thanks for your time this okay. morning. Thank you. Guy Burns, he's the Deputy Chair. 106.3 BGFM.